when you lose someone that you love, say, from death, it's very difficult. But it's something we can wrap our minds around. And usually, you know, with time, we get over it. What makes divorce special and so much more challenging than death is betrayal. Betrayal is more than just losing the other person, like you do in death, which is very challenging and difficult. But with betrayal, you're also losing a part of yourself. And that's the part that's very difficult to get past. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today, is how betrayal affects us and how we get over it. Because betrayal, to me, probably is the most difficult part of getting past the divorce and you know, truly feeling you know, a sense of forgiveness for, for my ex-wife and for other people. Quite honestly, you know, I've been betrayed on a couple of occasions, um, but the marriage is the biggest one. So let's talk about it. So when you lose someone to death, it's tough, you know, it really is. But it's just the loss of that person. And over time, you will eventually recover from it. And I would imagine that even in some divorces, it's possible to have that same experience where you know, the loss of that, that spouse, even in a, in a divorce, can be uh, difficult, no question about it, and it can be very um, traumatic. But you know, without betrayal, it's just the loss of, of that person in your life. Betrayal, however, adds another dimension to this that is completely unique. With betrayal, not only are you losing your partner, the person that you've trusted and loved and committed to, but you're also losing a big chunk of yourself. And that's the thing that I don't think most people fully grasp. Betrayal goes much, much deeper and the pain lasts much longer because it's not about them completely. Yes, they are the ones who did the betraying, but it's you who are... Uh, left trying to figure it out because it's not just about them in a way you kind of feel like it's about you too and that's what makes it so painful and so difficult to recover from when you first realize something's gone wrong that something is out of sorts you're left with this sense of confusion and not understanding exactly what it is because you trust this other person with so much of your whole self that just the idea that they would do something like this is beyond comprehension. So the first stage of betrayal is confusion. So you're left not knowing why this has happened, what's happening. You want answers, you wanna figure this out. You're trying to look for an explanation that makes sense, but no explanation makes any sense. It all feels like your worst nightmare has finally come to pass and um, understanding what's happening in that moment is completely impossible. Once you get past the confusion, the next evolutionary step in this little nightmare of yours is gonna be disbelief. You're not gonna believe that she could possibly do anything like that or the person who betrayed you could do anything, he or she. It's out of character, it doesn't make any sense. How could this possibly be happening? The confusion and disbelief leave you kind of in a state of um, being stunned. Um, you start to question everything. You start to question everything you've ever said to them, everything they've ever said to you. You start to wonder, how on earth could this have ever happened to me? And um, yeah, it's a very, uh, disorienting time. It's a time when you're not sure what's up is up and what's down is down and what anything that you've ever heard or said or had heard said to you has any validity at all. Like it all just seems like some kind of a, a con, a long con and you start to wonder how long has this been going on? 
you know? How long have I been lied to? And then the final stage of this little nightmare is a strong sense of worthlessness. And that's, that's the worst part. So you start to think that, yeah, she is wrong. That other person is absolutely wrong in their behaviors. But given the level of commitment, especially in a marriage, but also in certain friendships, you know, you, there's a certain um, unspoken trust there. And when that trust is broken, and you realize that this person has intentionally taken actions to deceive you and who has betrayed you with intention. You know, it wasn't like this accidentally just happened. No, they intended this to happen. Now, maybe they didn't intend you to find out about it, but they definitely intended to do whatever it is they did. This was not some kind of a freak event. This was something that they intended. They did it with intention. And that's the part that really, really, really hits you hard because the intention leaves you with a feeling of being less than, of feeling worthless, with a feeling of lacking value in that relationship, and maybe even going to the extreme and feeling a lack of value in yourself overall. And that, that can definitely leave you with a feeling um, or a sense of post-traumatic stress. Because once all those feelings start sinking in, um, that sensation of complete betrayal leaves you holding a, a feeling that is likened to people who have been assaulted or who have gone through um, horrors of war. That uh, psychological break that occurs when people um, are unable to reconcile and deal with what they're seeing, you know, what they're experiencing. It's beyond their comprehension that this is even possible. And so when it becomes real, that it is possible, and this did happen, there's a part of your brain that still rejects it. It just rejects the possibility. Despite rationally, you know this is what happened. And so you're left stuck in this place where you're both rationally realizing this has happened and that this has been extremely difficult and hurtful and it has a lot of emotional energy associated with it. And there's a deep part of you that wants to reject it because it's so nightmarish. It's such a, it's so far outside of something that you thought was possible that the disbelief and the confusion combined with that feeling of worthlessness leaves you unable to accept this reality on some level. So that is why divorce is so much more painful than death. When I see in the comments, you know, guys who have lost their, their wives to to death, you know, um, even if their marriage wasn't bad, there's still a sense of melancholy in their comments. And I, I definitely empathize with that, you know, and I, you know, that, that loss is definitely very, very heart wrenching to anyone. And if you've lost, you know, other family members, especially a child, you know, the heart wrenchingness of that is beyond words. I cannot even begin to imagine how difficult that is. But at some level, we can accept it because we all understand the fragility of life. We all understand that death is just a part of life. Even when it happens too early or it happens unexpectedly in a, you know, an accident or a, um, you know, some kind of a, you know, a, a terrible a set of circumstances. But with divorce, there is intention behind it. And intention matters, especially in matters of the heart. Because when someone acts with disregard for you and they intend to take actions that they know would cause you a great deal of pain and they move forward with those actions regardless of that, then the only interpretation you can have of that is that that person did not see value in your relationship. And so feeling a sense of worthlessness is probably pretty natural. It's probably a very, you know, um, normal way to feel. It's not healthy. Don't get me wrong. It's not healthy. And we're talking about how to undo a lot of this stuff. But yeah, when you get to that place, you're really, really, really feeling it bad. The next stage in this whole nightmare of uh, betrayal 
is you're left feeling powerless to do anything about it. I mean, what's happened has happened. She's made all the decisions. She's taken the entire um, relationship in her hands and she's basically thrown it away. And now it's gone, it's destroyed. All the trust, all the things that you had, everything that was there that was meaningful to you is gone. And you can't undo it. You can't change it. You can't go back in time and fix it. You are 100% powerless to do anything about it. And that feeling of powerlessness is um, very, very difficult for a man to deal with because we're, we're fix-its. You know, we like to fix things. We're the guys that, like, you've got a problem, let me know, I will help you fix it. But now here we are confronted with the worst problem of our lives and we have no power to do anything. There's nothing that you can do to change what's happened. And that feeling of powerlessness is um, very, very destructive. It really does leave you with that, that sense of um, post-traumatic stress, you know, because you can't, you can't undo what's been done. As I told my wife when she was walking out the door, I said, you know, this is something that can't be fixed. Once, it's, once you leave, it can't be undone. It's like shooting a gun. Yeah, you, what happens after the bullet leaves the barrel is, um, is out of our control. It's done. The, game, the gun has been fired and the, the shot will land and that's the end of it. You can't, you can't get that bullet back. And when someone takes action like this where they betray you, say with infidelity or something along those lines, um, yeah, once that shot is fired, there's no taking it back. You can't undo it. And, you know, I'm a big believer in forgiveness, but I'm not a believer in um, trusting the other person ever again. I mean, just because you forgive them, and I'll get into this deeper later, but it has nothing to do with letting them off the hook. No, that's not the point of forgiveness. Not at all. All right, let's talk a little bit more about how to undo this whole mess and how you can get back on your feet and, and try to get past it because it's devastating. Getting over this betrayal is not an easy thing. It's gonna require some time. The first thing that you need to do is you need to stop and focus on your own actions because when you reflect on the things that you did and the way you acted with integrity and how you honored your side of the bargain, it can help remove some of the feelings of, of um, misunderstanding or confusion um, because the confusion comes from not understanding why this happened. And so your first question, or a lot of us do, is we, we turn to how did we act under these circumstances? What did we do that may have caused this? Blaming yourself is the first thing that you naturally go to. You start to wonder, how did I create this? What did I do to, to cause this to happen? And so reviewing back over your own actions and seeing the ways that you acted with integrity and how you behaved and how you kept your word and your promises, it helps to clear up some of that confusion that it really had nothing to do with you. That the other person's behavior, her behaviors were hers. She acted on her own accord and nothing that you did caused it. Nothing that you did could have prevented it. So. Give yourself a break there. It's not about you, it's about her. Her behaviors are completely 100% responsible for everything that happened. Regaining your feelings of worthiness um, is really critical to your recovery because that feeling of having been treated as if you were worthless is very damaging to your self perception, your self-esteem, you know, in the way that you, you see yourself in the world, and then in future relationships with other people. So you got to look for, and this is what was really helpful to me, where you have uh, valuable relationships with others. So for me, it was about the value I could provide my kids and the, the gratitude that they had for the value I was bringing to their lives. And then with my mom and her Alzheimer's disease, the value I could bring to her. And then even with my clients, being able to focus in on the value that I could bring to them and helping them achieve their health goals and helping them get through their, 
their disease process, you know, because they, a lot of them were suffering with some terrible diseases. And um, yeah, it's wonderful to be able to experience compassion and empathy in a caregiving environment because it does give you a feeling of being worthy. It makes you feel valuable. And um, when you get those words of appreciation from people under those circumstances, it really does help to erase those feelings of worthlessness that you had when the betrayal occurred. So look for opportunities in your life to um, validate your value by looking at the other relationships that you have, people that you work with, people that you're related to, your family members, um, friends that you have, um, any other relationship where you're bringing value and really even in your own mind, just sort of go through that relationship and how you bring value to that person. Whether they appreciate it or not is secondary. Just understanding what value you're bringing. Very, very important. And then finally, dealing with those feelings of being powerless. Well, that kind of comes right from those feelings of um, being unworthy and um, where you find value and that you're giving other people, when you can see very clearly that you are, the actions that you take in your life um, have meaning and they are powerful. The things that you do, the things that you say, and the, um, the actions that you take, that you do have power to shape the outcomes in your own life, helps restore some of that that's lost in those feelings of powerlessness. And that's really, really critical. So I would start taking steps towards shaping your life in a direction that you personally care about and you want to go. It can be small things or large things. It can be something like just um, investing in a hobby that you enjoy. It gives you a feeling of power and control. You know, um, getting rid of you know, things that remind you of, of her, whatever that is, you know, if she has left furniture behind that she purchased and enjoyed, replace it, get rid of it, you know. Sometimes, you know, if you've been forced to move out of the house, sometimes that's a good thing, quite honestly. Getting away from those memories and shaping your own world can be extremely therapeutic and starting to um, create a life of your own uh, making very 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 powerful stuff so start start taking those steps start investing in yourself start shaping the world that you want to live in and be proactive about it start to regain your power by um, creating something new unique and valuable to you without concern for her and perhaps even without consideration for really anyone else's opinion. Um, getting beyond the opinion of others, anyone, is extremely uh, empowering. And not even the bad opinion of others, but the good opinion of others. Like you don't care what they think one way or the other, you know? Be yourself, do your own thing, get your life together, regain your power, get your feelings of value back, um, eliminate the confusion, you know, Go back to being the, the person that you want to be and see yourself as a, um, a man of integrity and, uh, and a man with a great deal of um, pride and a man with a great deal of power to control his own destiny. Because it's in those moments and those thoughts that you get past the PTSD. It's those thoughts that get you past the uh, the pain and help quiet the suffering all right you guys that's what i got for you today i hope you found this video enjoyable um, interesting educational if you have please like and subscribe um, i'll see you in the next one please you know stay healthy and if you can stay single